This week on the RC Basics, we take a look at styrene. What is styrene? Well, technically, it's this, and it goes by names like ethyl benzene, vinyl benzene, and penylethene. But we don't care about that. What we care about is this stuff. Sheets of plastic that come in many shapes and sizes and textures. Even diamond plate. With a little manipulation, we can turn this stuff into RC parts. So what tools are you gonna to need to work with this stuff? Nothing too complicated. A nice metal straight edge, preferably one that also measures, and a pencil to mark said measuring. An X-Acto knife, and plenty of spare blades to keep it sharp. Sandpaper of varying grits, and I like to have a sanding block handy. Sanding sticks are also nice to have, or just a fingernail file stolen from the missus or any female in the house, really. A set of files can be very handy also, but not required. And the last thing you're gonna need is glues. All of these tools are very affordable. Start simple, and as you get more sophisticated with your styrene work, move into more expensive tools. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is cut this stuff down to size. All that requires is for you to measure your cuts. Always measure twice. Then lightly draw a sharp X-Acto along your straight edge. Keep it light and let the blade do the work. Now you can easily snap the styrene along the scored line. For thicker styrene, you're gonna to have to score a little deeper, so give a couple extra passes with your X-Acto. Well, now you've got two pieces and you need to glue them together. Here's the process I use. I dab spots of CA glue on the edge of the piece I'm gluing. You can think of this as spot welds. Carefully position the piece, and when just right, give a spray of Instaset. I then come back with plastic weld to make a permanent joint. This is going to bond the pieces together, use small amounts, and let it flow into the joint. You can use one, two, three blocks, clamps, tape, all kinds of stuff to hold the pieces together while you're bonding them. You'll learn the best techniques that work for you. So you wanna add some details now. Well, here's some techniques that I use, but the sky's the limit, so be creative. The first technique you definitely need to master is sanding it into shapes. Styrene sands very easily and can be manipulated quickly this way. With coarse sandpaper, you can drag grooves into the styrene to simulate wood grain. Just make sure to be random with it. And last, use a 3D pen to simulate welded metal. Again, the sky's the limit. You can use vacuum forms to shape the styrene. You can build up pieces and sand it down into shapes. Use your imagination. 
All right, so you've got your styrene shape just the way you want it, and now you need to add color. So what paints can you use? Anything from enamels to acrylics or even automotive paints. But no matter what you use, you'll want to start with a good primer. And you can apply the paint with a paintbrush or an airbrush. Use whatever you have handy. You could also use good old rattle can paint if you want. If you have access to a 3D printer, don't hesitate to mix media. As you saw earlier with the 3D pen, 3D printing and styrene can live together. This flatbed is made from styrene, but the headache rack is 3D printed. Use whichever fabrication technique works best for the job. Well, there you go, guys. A quick look at the basics of styrene. Don't be intimidated by it. Go out, buy you a variety pack, get creative with it. And whatever you make, don't forget to send me a picture. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up with these videos. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the video, and let me know what you thought down in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.